Happy Monday. I almost said happy good morning. But happy good morning is always good. Morning, always good. good. No, it's that. always a good morning. So, happy Monday. Happy good morning to you if you're somewhere where it's still morning. Happy midday. That doesn't have a ring. I like the happy good morning. <laughs> How about just happy day? It's a I love starting day. your week off. I think how you start your week off matters. Oh, yes. So yes. grateful for you're this. You're right. You're in, in the Word, start your day off, have, start your week off, but it's like start your week off, but be in the Word all week long, every day. So we're starting your week off with some fun today. We've got some fun little things about pumpkins. Stay tuned for that. We have an interview later with Jonathan Kahn, the author. So stay tuned for that. He wrote, just wrote a new book, really amazing. With one um, of our dear friends. She yes. did the interview with, for Arthlane us. Arthlene so. Rippey, a, yeah. a dear, dear friend here at CTN, came out of retirement and did this interview Yay. for us. So you guys are yeah. going to enjoy that. But start your week off with this. I thought this was really funny. You guys tell me what you think at home and camera crew. We need your feedback on this. Here's this cartoon. Most of the new arrivals seem incapable of conversation. They just stare at their hands in despair. Oh, oh. And this is what the title of this was cell phone withdrawal. <laughs> Pastor, what do you think? Funny, kind of sad. Is that trying to send you when you get to heaven, you're going to be missing your phone? That's what they're saying. They're so it busy they don't here even on know earth how doing to this. Communicate. They, they stopped okay. communicating I mean, with people. Incapable of communication, as Leo types on his cell phone. Behind I mean, the we, we know that ain't true, because <laughs> when we get to heaven, there's not going to be sorrow. <laughs> exactly. A, you're right. You're right. I'm mean, going to no, be right. spiritual this early in the morning. <laughs> you're, right. you're absolutely right. It's like, so, I doubt so, if. Pastor had to set us straight. In heaven, you're not <laughs> even going to be thinking about anything like that. Just I just thought it was funny because you go, funny. I mean, you're at the restaurant, you see people, their heads are down in their cell phone, they're it's walking, bad. they run into things. So, anyway, I really too much cell phone use. That's the theme for that. All right, coming up this week, Lori, special day coming up Wednesday National Pumpkin Day, which pumpkin I think is. Pumpkin Day. Yeah, pumpkin Day. National Pumpkin Day is Wednesday. So. I wasn't going to do all the pumpkin stuff, and I really wanted to spare Pastor James by doing a pumpkin smoothie again, because I can't oh, yeah. remember if we that, liked it. That was horrible. It, it was not good. <laughs> Last year, we made a pumpkin smoothie. I don't know that we would do that again. Actually, it wasn't bad, because I did preview. I looked at the show, and it really wasn't that bad, but I don't think that was his favorite. So I just we should roll the that. segment in. We should have. <laughs> we could have. Just fun. to see you your didn't reaction. You did any funny faces, though. Oh, I didn't? No, you right. didn't. Then you, you must have liked said it. it wasn't that bad. So we just thought, you know, let's just bring you some ideas because a lot of people just think of pumpkins as pumpkin pie and that's, that's it. Yeah, pumpkin so, pie. I don't right. think of anything else pumpkin. But there are a lot of things you can do with pumpkins. All right, so, so thumbs up, thumbs down at home. Yeah. Tell us if you would try this recipe or not at home. Thumbs up, thumbs down. Don't, don't comment on Facebook. We don't want any thumbs down. But comment at home. Thumbs up, thumbs down. Pumpkin cheesecake crepes. Oh, yeah. That sounds delicious. That it actually sound in on that. Hey, man, we can, oh my gosh, we got a lot of thumbs down here in the studio. I like crepes. Oh man, I think like crepes are Scrooges in the studio. Okay, What's wrong so with you guys? just so you know, too, pumpkins are good for you. Okay, pumpkin beef and black bean chili. Actually, oh. I would really like that. <laughs> Never. And here's why: pumpkin <laughs> is hearty. Everybody <laughs> thinks of pumpkin as. Just the sweet thing. It's not sweet. You can make it. It's very hearty. It's very filling and very, very, very healthy. <laughs> we got okay. We got complete so, thumbs down in the studio. You guys can't see everybody in the studio, but they all hate it. So anyway, all right. Roasted squash and pumpkin seed mole bowls. Yes. I'm sorry. What's a mole? <laughs> a mole is a type of lots of seasoning. It's really, really good. So here's the key. You want something hearty. You don't want to eat a heavy meat. This is for a lot of people that just want a vegetable meal and a little starch, that would be this. So mole is a very condensed type of seasoning. You would season it heavily, put rice underneath everything, and I would even put avocado slices on well, top of that. Well, just call it a rice bowl. So, well, yeah, you call could. it a pumpkin squash rice because bowl. Because the mole is the type of seasoning, so it's not bland. Did anyone even enjoy that? Did we get a single thumbs I up know. on that? No, Mole is the only thumbs up in the entire world on that healthy, one. I like eating healthy. All right, okay. next. Pumpkin ice cream pie. Yes. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. I think absolutely. the theme is if it's sweet, we're all in. Yeah. <laughs> if you're trying to make it healthy, we're out. I, <laughs> Roasted. I, I like savory, so I'm a, I definitely, okay, so. Oh, what's next? Chocolate Ooh, pumpkin cake. Ooh. Absolutely. I, do we think chocolate and pumpkin match? I don't know. I'm a, I, I, they I do was like cool this with you, Pastor James. I was kind of like, not sure. I'm on the, you know, not sure about that. on the fence on that one? Well, not ever on the fence, but yes, I'm not sure about it. God, it looks good Pumpkin pie dip. Are these real recipes? Yes. yes. <laughs> so you can go to goodhousekeeping.com yeah, and find maybe. these recipes. 
Um, well, here, I like this one. I want to try this one. I mean, think about Which it. Which one? The pumpkin pie, pie yeah. dip? What yeah. are you dipping in it? Crap, Look at this. Cream, they got a vanilla wafer. crackers or vanilla wafer. A vanilla wafer. I think what you dip in it. Depends. Or a graham a cracker. vanilla wafer in pumpkin pie? Come on. Graham cracker. I'd be good with that. And last yes. but not least, what's our no. last one? Pumpkin no. pizza and cauliflower no. crust. <laughs> <Just never. laughs> I mean, I, that's a stretch. That is a little stretch. But for there you those, go. Here's our wide shot crew. Thumbs up, thumbs down. What, what, what do we say? Pumpkin coffee. Oh, look at it. There's oh, thumbs down pumpkin everywhere. Pumpkin coffee would be incredible. Pumpkin flavored pumpkin coffee. Pumpkin latte. Yeah, or the latte, or the smoothie. I'm going to have one today. Gosh, the that, pumpkin pizza did not go well. Yeah, that's Not funny. good. That's funny. All right, well, off of that, so we didn't have a lot of success with that. Only a couple things that I think I would even try. Lori seemed to love everything, but. I just like, I like, <laughs> I like to try things. And the mole. Yeah, and I love savory food. I'm not a, I don't eat lots and lots of eat, eat sweets. I mean, I'll eat a little tiny something, but I'm not, you know, eating sweets every day. I just can't do it. Um, just remember, it's not good for you. Anyway, um, on to our great good news segment. News. Yeah, this you, is great news. You find what you're looking for, so we like to look for good news. Yes. And today we have a great story for you, and this comes from the FCA, which is the Fellowship, Fellowship. of Christian Athletes. The very right we had on the show, right? Yeah, we yes. had them on a couple of weeks ago. If you guys go back, go online and watch that show. Great program. But they have what's called their Fields of Faith. And oh, you I go to fieldsoffaith.com. And they're really in the midst of it right now. They take place different times, you know, throughout the season, uh, throughout the country. Uh, but anyway, what is Fields of Faith? Watch this video, and then we're going to come back and tell you where you can find one locally. Every year, across the country, hundreds of high school stadiums sit dark and empty on a cool fall evening. In a short time, these fields will be transformed from darkness into a place of hope and light and become fields of faith. It's time for this generation to lead. Students are ready to challenge each other. The movement of God is happening. And it's happening in communities like yours. One day. One message. One stand. We are sharing our faith. And we are reading God's word. We are sharing what God has done in our lives. We are filling stadiums by the hundreds. And by the thousands. We are. We are. We are. We are. We are. We are fields of faith. That's Fields of Faith, which I love seeing kids reaching Those kids, kids praying for Jesus. And, oh, come on. That's beautiful. And what a great name, huh? You Fields of Fields Faith. Of faith? Yes. Come on. So awesome. That so is awesome. We love the Fellowship of Christian Athletes, and so we decided we wanted to find one in our area. And since we're in Clearwater St. Pete, um, we found one coming up on November 3rd at the Calvary Baseball Stadium, and it's Calvary Christian High School that's putting it on. So that's how we found our area for you to find one. Go on the FCA.com Fields of Faith, drop down bar, and then type in your area and you'll be able to find where there is one. They do them throughout the year. They scatter them out so that um, if you're you know, nearby one, go to it. But it's a beautiful event. Thousands of kids show up, just like the video. I'm just, I love, love, Yeah, just love put your it. zip code in, and it'll, yeah. it'll or and put your I think there's information if you want to host one, too, yes. right? Yes. Yeah. So well, partner with them, but man, seeing those kids, oh, and the kids go on. out, normally they'll have, you know, a worship Beautiful. band out there. They'll have worship team out, and then they'll do those little huddles. You might have seen in the video, a couple kids in a little huddle. They'll get in a huddle, love and they'll it. talk, and they'll pray, and just, just awesome, awesome ministry. So we encourage you to support that. All right, we talked about it earlier in the show. 
Jonathan Kahn recently wrote a book and um, Lori and I were actually on vacation, weren't able to come in and meet with him. So we asked Arthleen Rippey, who hosted Homekeepers here at CTN for, I don't know, 150 years or something. No, she was here for a long, long time. About 40 years. She's now She's retired. Amazing. We asked She's Arthleen amazing. to come in and asked her if she would interview Jonathan Kahn and she jumped at the opportunity and a pretty amazing, amazing man, historian, uh, but just fascinating. And you're actually gonna get to hear his testimony. So listen to this from Jonathan Kahn. It's a real privilege of mine to talk to a good friend by now, yeah. Jonathan Kahn. Great to be here. Yes, and um, if I'm counting right, this is your eighth book? Seven. Oh, okay. But, but you I'll must do, be I'll, working I'll, on the eighth. I'll, I'm thinking about the eighth. Uh -huh. <laughs> I'm thinking about it, yeah. Uh, yes. The, the Return of the Gods is the seventh book, yeah. Yes, and it's, uh, this one's The Return of the Gods. I wanted to ask one quick question. Mm -hmm. We have a limited amount of time, but if you can do it in a minute. How did you become Messianic? Well, it's, it's how I got saved. You know, yeah. I, I was raised, I'm, I'm Jewish. I was raised uh, in a Jewish home, went to synagogue. Uh, my father escaped Hitler, was a Holocaust survivor. Um, and, uh, but a secular home, they were both, my parents were scientists. Uh, I went to Hebrew school, but when I was, when I then became an atheist when I was eight years old, because, because I said, I don't see the God of the Bible in the synagogue, you know, and that lasted until I said, wait a minute, atheism doesn't work. There's gotta mm -hmm. be something. So that when I was 12, I started seeking books on everything, Nostradamus, science, religion, occult, UFOs, everything. One day I picked up a book. I thought it was a UFO book. It was The Late Great Planet Earth by Hal Lindsey. All wow. about the prophecies of the Bible coming true. I had no idea. So it changed my, my whole thinking. I'm telling my friends about it. I wasn't saved, but I'm, I'm winning them to the Lord. And then, and so I finally said, you know, I know I have to give my life, but I didn't want to. I had a rock band and hell. Mm -hmm. So I, I, said, I said, Lord, if you give me a long life, here's a deal. Give me a long life. I'll accept you on my deathbed. And so, and so soon after that, I almost, got, ki I almost got killed. And then I was, and then finally I was actually hit by a, a locomotive train. Mm -hmm. And then I said, when I was hit by the train, I said, okay, Lord, I said, I said, okay, I'll accept you when I turn 20. And on my 20th birthday, I accepted him. Like a kicking and screaming, you know, but it was the greatest thing. And when I did that, listen, I knew the most Jewish thing in the world is to believe Praise in Praise God, he let you live till yeah. you were 20. Yeah. yeah, that was good. Yeah. All right. The Return of the Gods is your newest book. Yeah. So. Who are the gods? Where did they go? And uh, yeah. to what are they returning? Yeah, the Bible says, in a nutshell, I mean, we're going to go hyper quick, but, but, but I'll give it a little taste. The Bible says that actually behind the gods are actually spirits. Are They're called the Shedim in Hebrew. In Greek, they're called the Daimonia or the demonic. And the thing is, so, so that was happening. Now, what, what happened to all those gods? The gospel happened. Jesus happened. The, the gospel drove out the gods of the Ran ancient away. world. Just, yeah, and so if it drove out the gods, it means it cast out the spirits. That means it was the greatest exorcism in human history, what happened to Western civilization. But Jesus gives a warning. He speaks about that spirit that leaves the man and comes back. If the house is empty, it's coming back and brings seven more. And so he ultimately says, so it will be with this generation. So here's the warning. If any culture, any nation, any civilization that has been delivered of, the God, delivered of, the, of these spirits, turns back, turns away from God, empties itself of God, the spirits are coming back. The gods are coming back to repossess it. And so what is happening to America? What's happening to the West? The ancient spirits that were cast out when the gospel came are now coming back because we have opened the door. And so everything that's happening is there. So uh, what other nations have experienced this in the long, long history of the world? Well, well, you can look at Israel because Israel knew God. And when they turned away from God, look what happened. You know, they turned to the gods. But you, you see the warning of it because he says they come back worse. Look at right. what happened to Germany. Germany was right. a, a nation that knew God. I mean, had, had Reformation turned away from God. Martin Luther. What, what happened wasn't secular. It was demonic. So now it's happening to America and it's happening to the world. I see this awful thing. Yeah. You have very yeah. well defined it. And we see it on TV. Where is yeah. the church? Yeah, but good, good question. The reason I wrote The Return of the Gods is not only to reveal this, you know, because you can't, you can't win if you don't know what you're dealing with, you don't, you're fighting with, but it's to arm believers, to strengthen believers. And, and so the thing is, we have to rise. The, thing, the last part of the book is called The Other God. We have the power. Our God is, uh, is above all the gods. And the, in, in the first century, it was the power to drive these gods out. We still have that power, but we have to rise to it. If we don't rise to it, if we don't stand, if we don't go all out with God, we're not going to see it. What we're dealing with is what Elijah dealt with. You know, it's what Paul dealt with. It's what Moses dealt with. It's, we, are, we are living in biblical times. This could be the most exciting times, but, but we have to rise. Because if we have the power, but we don't use it, it doesn't mean anything. We have to rise and we have to go all out for God. Okay, now what do you say to the pastors 
who preach how to yes. be a better you. Yeah. I mean, yeah. <laughs> what, yeah. what about sin and you, it, repentance it, and holy living? The problem is because of this onslaught, the, the church has become almost defensive and almost become, become intimidated. It has become intimidated. If we don't preach the word, we've got no power. One of the things, remember, these, these principalities were cast out by the word. So they're trying to cast the word out. If they can silence that, you know, right now it's cancel culture because they're trying to cancel it. But we cannot be canceled. The gospel cannot be canceled if we don't let it. You have to preach the word. You have to preach the cross. Without the cross, there's no prosperity. There's no, all the blessing you talk about. There's the cross and the resurrection. Yes. There's one name. And so if we don't, without repentance, there's no revival. We need revival. Without revival, we're lost. We need revival. That's why I wrote the book. But without repentance, there's no revival. We have to preach the word. You know what I like to see? Like Jesus used miracles yeah. to bring them to the yeah. kingdom. I'd like to see signs and wonders that, yeah. and that you pray until you get to that point because he's the same yesterday, today, and forever. He can still do anything he's ever done before. Yeah, but yeah, in order to see that, we have to be, you know, God wants the book of Acts, you know, you know and, and we always say we, like, we want to live the book of Acts. Well, you know what? The book of Acts, they were dealing with the gods. They were dealing with, with, all, with the pagan culture. Well, it's back. So we are supposed to come out. We are to go back to the book of Acts. We're to be the book of Acts believer for such a time as this. That's what God has. You know, when the dark gets darker, it's just the lights are going to shine like the stars. We have to shine like the stars. It's time to be like Elijah. It's time to be, to be the person God called us to be. You are giving me hope. Oh, there is hope. Um, and I have been talking to Jonathan Kahn. What a blessing. We had lunch one day upstairs. Yes, yes. Wonderful it was, it was conversation. <laughs> yes, it was wonderful. And the name of the book is The Return of the Gods, and they can get it anywhere, Everywhere. Right? Amazon right now. Go online anywhere. You can get it. But get it not just for yourself. Get it for people in your life who are under this as well. Yes, and um, thanks so much. It's such a pleasure to oh, talk to you blessing. again. It was an explosion. And it's good to be with you. God bless you. Wow, that was Arflene Rippey and Jonathan Kahn. Whoa, what a that great interview, it. huh? Fantastic. Oh, two iconic <clears throat> people, man. Now, if you want to see more, that was a you know little condensed interview that mm -hmm. Arflene just did for this Love Living Life program. But Jonathan was here for the whole day, so he sat down with Jennifer Mallon. He sat down with Darlene Greenlee. So there's some longer versions. And if you want to hear more about the book, you can watch him with Jen Mallon on November 8th or Darlene on November 2nd and 3rd. And you can watch both those shows, of course, streaming online. Just go to ctnonline.com. You can watch those. And I get to hear it's a little, you know, our Queen did a little different job as his testimony and really Love got it. into the which revival portion of it, which is a little different than his interview on some of those other shows. So anyway, tune in and learn more about that book. But man, I love that he preached about the preachers and revival. And we've got to have this revival. And, and God's the same yesterday, and today, I'm and forever. Just say, I don't know exactly how old Arlene is, but goals. I mean, she's incredible. She's a, she I is. I love seeing people that are like the top of what, you know, they've done it so many years that they're so anointed to yes. do it. Yes. She's incredible. She, she is, is. Love it. What a gift. Yeah. Such a great friend to us. And what a gift to us and, and to CTN. So you'll see a lot more Love of Arthelene. Love she'll, it. She'll be more. She, she, we'll probably have her around Christmas time like we've had in the past. <laughs> so that'll be fun. Um, but so yeah, great. she's a beautiful lady. That's so anyway, exciting. Yeah. Get Jonathan Kahn's book. As he said, it's available this just about anywhere. Speaking of books. I know we don't want to reveal it now, but Pastor's got a new book coming out. Maybe, yes, we'll, he maybe does. we'll talk about that next week. We have to. You yeah, bring, bring your book, book next week. Let's, yeah. let's, uh, it premieres we'll next it. week or no? I think it, it launches November 6th. Okay. So 10 got prophetic got values for today. Yeah. Oh, Bill Johnson so did the forward. I know. Yeah, I mean, I'm going can't. on all these other shows. Yeah, no, <laughs> I'm about to do like a month tour on this thing. We've been waiting for you to say, yes, we can do that. I know. So. We will. So. Just like Jonathan Cobb's tour promoting his book. Pastor's going on every TV show in the country promoting his book, and he's sitting right here. But this one, we'll make it happen. Let's do it. Definitely make it happen. All right. But our devotional. Yes, let's devote. A different book of yours. Yes, another one. <laughs> Gaging Heaven Today. The other, the other book. If you want to follow along, you can pick this up anywhere. It's just a 365 devotionals. We love doing them every Monday. What a blessing. Yep. And today, by the day, I'm sorry. No, go ahead. And by the way, he has a devotional for women too, and it's phenomenal. I look at both of them every day. <laughs> I read both of them. Wow, so, three books this year. Yeah, three books. Not like you're busy right now. Better write something now. And, you know, I think the other thing while we're doing this really quick, if you're interested in Pastor James' books, Go on, um, go on Amazon, just yeah. type in his name and you can find all of the books he's written plus the one coming up because it is on a pre-sale. I think there's so. even a link to the podcast on there, isn't there? there if you scroll is, up, yeah. the so, podcast link yeah. is there yeah, too cool. as well. So, yeah. anyway. so right. today, guys, October 24th, the devotion is called Faith Crawl. The scripture is 1 Peter 2.2. 2. 
In the Passion, it says, in the same way that nursing infants cry for milk, you must intensely crave the pure spiritual milk of God's word, for this milk will cause you to grow into maturity, fully nourished and strong for your life. When it comes to faith, it's a journey of putting one foot in front of the other. Paul talks about the difference between milk and meat and how, as we begin to spiritually mature, we're expected to chew on scripture with just a bit more depth. That's 1 Corinthians 3, 2. Hebrews 6 also warns us of the peril of not progressing in our faith. We can't go on laying foundations over and over. There are stages in faith. There are measures. Some people walk, some crawl, some just lay flat. But God wants us to run because it's a race. If you want to be spiritually mature, you need to be an overcomer. Get ready for a slow simmer at first, but don't just stay there. If you want to be spiritually great, understand that it's not going to happen overnight. As we read through Paul's letters, it's thrilling to learn about the miracles and revivals, but we can't close our eyes to all the years of service and sacrifice in between. That's amazing. I like that. Faith crawl, but it's a race. So you want to end up running. Love that. Run the way. You know, we, we've often said that, uh, you know, we're in a microwave. We serve a slow cooker God in a microwave Christianity, you know? Mm -hmm. A lot of people, we all have promises we're believing for, but maybe they haven't happened as fast as we want them to. And it's a faith walk. It really is. What I love is they came to Jesus and said, how do we see the kingdom now? He went into the parable of the minus, right? So he gave one five, one four. The wild thing about these two parables that he taught about that was if I showed up at any given moment, the people that were doing the work of God didn't have anything in their hands. The one that was preserving ended up getting it stolen from them was the one we would see. And that's how faith is. When you take risks and you serve God and you go through the ups and downs of faith, at any given moment, if I showed up, it might look like not much. As, if you have if you have $100 in the bank and God says, sow it, and I show up the next day, your bank account's going to say zero. <laughs> right. But the truth is you have fruit coming on your behalf right. because you've sown. And so I just think when it comes to spiritual maturity, it's faithfulness, it's time. Mm -hmm. You know, the Bible says when Sarah considered God faithful, she bore a son. So it's, it's not only us understanding his faithfulness, but it's us being willing to be faithful in this. It, it's a long race. It's not a short sprint. I love what you said about a microwave, um, whatever, industry or society, just society yeah. that world, we're in. Yeah. Because people do. They It's like, God, I want it now. It's like right. email. I mean, get on your knees and pray. Let's try an email instead right. of email. I know that's an old thing that people said for yeah. a long time. But it's so true because in what you believe God can do for you, you also are being tested in your faith in Him. Right. He's not going anywhere. He's going to give you His best. You're His child, but He wants to develop that trust in us. And I think that's an amazing thing when you think about the fact that God loves you. He wants the best for you. You're His child. If you don't read the word, you're not going to understand that. Right. You walk in victory and you continue to move in victory every single day. Mm -hmm. Every day is a victory. Waking up in the morning and, and God breathing in your lungs and you waking up and saying, good morning, Jesus. I mean, that is walking in victory. Yes. And it's what do you put your eyes to? The word is what feeds you. The word is what strengthens you. The word is what compels you to move forward because then you find out who you are. Right. When you find out who you are in Christ, then you'll continue to walk forward every single day. It's a testing of our faith. Absolutely. And I think that's one of the most important things is it's not just, okay, I want it now, God. Yeah, so do I, but that's too easy. I think I want my faith developed like it's been developed through the years. Well, if you can see it, it's not faith. The Bible right. says, faith is the evidence of things hoped for, the things not seen. So if you can see right. it, it's not faith. And the pastor said, you know, you so if you give $100 and it's, it's not a, it's not a, what do you call those things? You pull the, slot yeah, it's not a slot machine that you put 100 in and you hit the one arm and 200 comes out. That's, That's not, not faith. You can see that. That's not faith. Faith right. is crawling like, the, like his devotional said. And then you mm -hmm. learn to run and you don't know where you're crawling or you don't see the end of that. You know, people that run marathons, they've said mentally it is, you know, 
of course, physically it taxes your body, but mentally your, your mind starts to go, man, sure. I don't know, I'm at mile X right. marker. I don't know if I can make it. Right. The ones that had the most success running marathons are the ones that look at the distance they already ran. In other words, when they hit the one third point, they go, oh man, one third's already gone. They don't say, oh man, I got two thirds to right, go. Right, I don't know right, if right. I'm gonna make it. They say, uh, one third's gone, piece of cake, I've got this. Right. And it's just that mental attitude of, look, I can't see the other two thirds, but I know what's behind me. I know what I've done, I know where I've been, and I know where I'm going, I'm just not there yet. So you've gotta have that mental attitude I don't kind of tie it into sports, but I've um, been studying a lot lately for my college sports medicine renewal. Got to do my continuing education. <laughs> That's what they say about, about training is a lot of it's mental. And you've got to understand that, yeah, you can't see that finish line, but you know where you've been. You know how far you've come. And that gives you that inspiration, that motivation to move forward. So same thing with faith. Look, I know what the Lord's done in the past. I know he's met every one of our needs and I know he's going to do it again. So right now I may not see it. Right. I may have, you know, may not see it right now in the physical sense but I know it's coming. So I'm not gonna fret, I'm not gonna stress, I'm not gonna worry about it, because my faith is, Lord, you've always provided, I know you're gonna provide, whatever it is. And no, there's not a Christian alive that's exempt from trust. If you're gonna be a Christian, you're gonna have to learn to trust, and that's how your faith's gonna grow. It's like, you said it best, faith is the substance thing hoped for, that it's thing not seen. Well, if we really are gonna have great faith, mm -hmm. then we have to be comfortable in history, and most people can't. If you are, if you're determined to control the process, you're not going to really find God much. Mm -hmm. But if we're willing to live in mystery, meaning I don't know which way, but I know who does know, you know what I mean? I don't know what to do, King Jehoshaphat, but my eyes are on you. Mm -hmm. And so great faith is going to start with, I'm okay not knowing, and mm -hmm. I'm okay trusting. And we just believe in this season, you, we don't know the answer, but you do. We don't have the miracle right now, but you do. Yeah. And it, it's, uh, you know, a lot of people want to control the process. It's not faith. You can't have both. You've got to have, you kind of give up your right. You know, the Bible says, um, you know, uh, one morning I woke up and the Lord said, I want you to trust me beyond your level of understanding. Proverbs mm -hmm. three, you know, don't lean on your own wow. understanding and all your ways acknowledge him. He'll direct your path. And it's like, are we willing to give up the right to know? That's hard. That's hard because you want to control oh, you. Want to, I mean, beyond your understanding. Wait, I want, you know, personally, I like to have the blueprint. I want to, okay, here's right. what I'm doing. I've got A, B, C, D. I'm going to do these things. I love that blueprint and I'm going to hit it with everything I have. But yeah, to, okay, no blueprint. What Like this set design. <laughs> what are we doing? I don't know, but I trust Lori because she has incredible pray, <laughs> giftings in that pray, way. Just pray, like you trust the pray, Lord. Pray, pray. And the giftings pray that he's going to give you. Yeah. Pray, Remember when we were building our, our last set, I mean, Lori literally has a gift where she's like, I don't know what it's going to look like, but I know when I walk around the store, <laughs> it'll come to me. So she could be like, ILA just worked out with ILC, and now we're going to have this. But can you imagine us waiting for God? And he's like, don't worry, guys. I'm up here and... Pretty soon the plan's gonna come in place and it you're gonna does. know what it's gonna be. It always does. Well, hey, listen, thank you for joining us today. Arthleen, thank you for that interview. Yes, we love that was you. Incredible. love you so, so much. Gonna have her back on the show and thank you for joining us today. Give us your feedback. Go online, love living life at ctnonline.com. Let us know what you thought about all those pumpkin recipes. And we always <laughs> pray for you with 3 John 1, 2, beloved. I pray that in all respects, you may prosper and be in good health just as your soul prospers. We love you guys. God bless you. Thank you. Awesome. Have a great week. You don't forget anything, do you? Uh huh. <laughs>